The words can make you, break you, they can heal your soul, they can damage you forever. So I always try to use the positive words in my life wherever I go. They call it adversity, I call it opportunity. They call it weakness, I call it strength. They call me disabled, I call myself differently able. They see my disability, I see my ability. There are some incidents that happen in your life. And those incidents are so strong that they change your DNA. And I'm going to share what exactly happened to me. I was 18 years old when I got married. And this thing I'm sharing for the very first time on an international level. I was 18 years old when I got married. I belonged to a very conservative family, a Baloch family, where good daughters never say no to their parents. My father wanted me to get married. And all I said was, if that makes you happy, I'll say yes. And of course, it was never a happy marriage. Just about after two years of getting married, about nine years ago, I met a car accident. Somehow my husband fell asleep and the car fell in the ditch. He managed to jump out, saved himself. I'm happy for him. But I stayed inside the car and I sustained a lot of injuries. The list is a bit long. The radius ulna of my right arm were fractured. The wrist was fractured, shoulder bone and collarbone were fractured. My whole rib cage got fractured. But that injury that changed me and my life completely as a person and my perception towards living my life was the spine injury. Many people came to rescue, they gave me CPR, they dragged me out of the car and while they were dragging me out, I got the complete transaction of my spinal cord. Those two and a half months in the hospital were dreadful. I will not make up stories just to inspire you. I was at the verge of despair. One day doctor came to me and he said, well, I heard that you wanted to be an artist, but you ended up being a housewife. I have a bad news for you. You won't be able to paint again because your wrist and your arm are so deformed. You won't be able to hold a pen again. And I stayed quiet. Next day, doctor came to me and said, your spine injury is so bad, you won't be able to walk again. I took a deep breath and I said, it's all right. The next day, doctor came to me and said, because of your spine injury and the fixation that you have in your back, you won't be able to give birth to a child again. That day, I was devastated. I still remember, I asked my mother, why me? And that is where I started to question my existence. That why am I even alive? What's the point of living? I won't be able to be a mother again. And that was quite devastating for me. But then I realized there are so many children in the world, all they want is acceptance. So there is no point of crying, just go and adopt one. And that's what I did. I gave my name in different organizations, different orphanages. I didn't mention that I'm on a wheelchair, dying to have a child. So I just told them that this is Muniba Mazari and she wants to adopt a boy or girl whatsoever, but I want to adopt a kid. And I waited patiently. Two years later, I got this call from a very small city in Pakistan. I got a call and they said, are you Muniba Mazari? There is a boy, baby boy. And would you like to adopt? And when I say yes, I could literally feel the labor pain. I said, yes, yes, I am going to adopt him. I am coming to take him home. And when I reached there, the man was sitting and he was looking at me from head to toe. And in the back of my head, I kept thinking that Oma is going to stay. She's on the wheelchair. She doesn't deserve it. How is she going to take care of him? And I looked at him and I said, do not judge me because I'm on the wheelchair. But you know what he said? He said, I know you will be the best mother of this child. You both are lucky to have each other. And that day, I was two years old, two days old, and today he's six. Do you know when you end up being on the wheelchair? What's the most painful thing? People think that they will not be accepted by the people because we, in the world of perfect people, are imperfect. So I decided to appear more in public. 
I started to paint. I always wanted to. I have done a lot of exhibitions. I'm Pakistan's first wheelchair-bound artist. I have done a lot of modeling campaigns. I became the National Goodwill Ambassador for UN Women Pakistan, and now I speak for the rights of women, children. We talk about inclusion, diversity, gender equality, which is a must. I was featured in BBC 100 Women for 2015. I'm one of the Forbes 30 under 30 for 2016. We have this amazing fantasy about life. This is how things should work. This is my plan. It should go as per my plan. If that doesn't happen, we give up. So my dear friends, let me tell you one thing. I never wanted to be on the wheelchair. Never thought of being on the wheelchair. I was always aspiring to do bigger things, but had no idea that for that I have to pay the price to be where I am today. It's a very heavy price. It is okay to be scared. It is okay to cry. Everything is okay, but giving up should not be an option. They always say that failure is not an option. Failure should be an option because when you fail, you get up and then you fail and then you get up and that keeps you going. That's how humans are strong. <laughs> failure is an option, should be an option, but giving up is not, never.